Do you want to grow your Instagram in 2024? Well, in order to help us predict what's going to happen in the near future, it's important for us to look back at the past. And so in today's episode, I wanted to go through my 2023 Instagram predictions and see what came true and what didn't. And the purpose of this episode is not just to validate my own predictions or to establish my own credibility before sharing my 2024 predictions, which I should note my 2024 predictions are going to come out very soon, so make sure you're subscribed. But you might have missed a lot of the changes on Instagram over the past year. And the last thing I want for you is to fall behind in 2024 because you're still using strategies from 2022. So with that being said, I had eight big predictions for Instagram in 2023. We're going to go through each of them one by one. I'm going to try to give you as much background information and as much data as I can to say whether or not they came true or not. And I'll even share with you my bold prediction from this past year that definitely, well, I guess I won't give it away, but I don't think it came true. My first big prediction for Instagram in 2023 was that there would be a big jump in the overall quality of content. And I think we can all agree that the level of editing for Instagram reels as a whole has definitely improved. If you think about the Hormozy style reel, which Alex Hormozy made popular near the end of 2022, they're everywhere on Instagram nowadays. It seems like almost every editing app now has some sort of template that looks similar to the Hormozy style reel with built-in captions, very bold text, quick cuts, B-roll, background editing, all of this stuff. And overall, the level of quality of reels has improved. At the beginning of 2023, we saw very few people using professional cameras, microphones, lighting, or anything like that in their Instagram reels. But now at the end of 2023, as I scroll through my Instagram feed, I'm seeing a lot more of this high quality content. Also, because Instagram gave us reels templates, I think the editing complexity of people's reels has also improved. For those of you who don't know, as you scroll through the reels tab, you might see a little tiny button in the lower left corner of people's reels that say use template or use this template. And when you click on that, you can automatically import your own videos and have it match the editing pacing or the clip length of the person who was the original creator. And so because of that, it's made it a lot easier for people to create more complex or more highly edited reels. And thus, I think this confirms my first prediction for this past year, which is an overall higher level of quality. And I don't want to give away any of my 2024 Instagram predictions just yet, but what I will tell you is that if your level of quality, if your reels haven't improved over the course of 2023, then it's time to figure out a way to take them to the next level. Like if you compare your posts from January and February of 2023 to November and December of 2023, there better be a difference. There better be a big jump in quality of your reels. And I don't just mean having like 4k video and using some professional fancy microphone. I mean the editing, the style, the pacing, the audio quality. We need to see that big jump. And if you don't see a noticeable difference in the level of quality in your reels, then there are a few different things that you can do to improve said quality in 2024. One way that you can improve the quality of your reels is like I've mentioned a few times now, the equipment. So you don't have to get fancy equipment, but even just like a $15 microphone, off of Amazon is going to significantly improve the audio quality and audio is half of video. So that in and of itself will significantly improve the quality of your overall reel. Besides just the hardware that you're using, there's also the software. So maybe you're going to upgrade from a basic video editor like iMovie or CapCut, which by the way, I love CapCut, to something that's more advanced like Adobe Premiere or something like that that allows you even more complexity and fine tuning within the editing of your reels. Speaking of editing, a third way that you can significantly improve the quality of your content is by outsourcing the editing to someone who it's their passion, their full-time job or their expertise to do editing. That was something that I did early on in 2023 and I've noticed a huge difference in the quality of my reels when I have them edited by my editor shout out to Hannah, rather than edited by myself. So maybe in 2024, you wanna free up that time, space, and energy that you usually spend editing your reels, and instead you're gonna pass that off to someone who that's their full-time job, they're gonna do a much better job than you, and you've now saved that time that you can spend on other areas. My second Instagram prediction for 2023 was lower engagement on trend-related posts, whether that be meme trends, viral audio trends, or anything like that, but also I predicted that Instagram 
Instagram would have its own specific trends that were generated right on the platform rather than just trends that were copies of what was popular on TikTok a week ago. And so there were kind of two parts to this prediction. Let's break down the first part, which was lower overall engagement on trends. I think we can just say that there is lower overall engagement across the board on Instagram. I've reported on this a few times, but Reels views on average are down 76% in 2023 compared to 22. And if we assume that the vast majority of Reels that are posted are trending audio Reels or some sort of remake of a trend rather than original content, which I would assume to be true even though we don't have uh, exact data on how it divides up between original content and recreated trending content, I think it's pretty safe to assume that trends or just overall posts, Reels on Instagram are getting less engagement in 2023 than they were in 2022. The second part of this prediction was that there would be Instagram specific trends and this is definitely the case. If you remember back to 2022, there were very few trends that originated on Instagram. Most things started on TikTok, they blew up and were popular there, and then one to two weeks later, they would become popular on Instagram. And this was so true that it was to the point that people on TikTok would make jokes about how we're gonna see this on Instagram in a few weeks, or if they heard a piece of news that was already outdated, they would say things like, hey, you should post this on Instagram Reels. It was a way that people on TikTok could kind of make themselves feel like they're better than people who primarily use Instagram. And while it is still true that many trends still originate on TikTok, and make their way to Instagram, there is undoubtedly a lot of trends in 2023 that have started on Instagram and then made their way to TikTok or even just started on Instagram and stayed on Instagram. Some of the big trends that stand out to me that are Instagram specific and aren't as popular on TikTok or at least they didn't originate on TikTok are first and foremost, the short six second, seven second reel where it's just kind of like a B-roll video of maybe you know behind the scenes of someone working at a desk or like a landscape or something like that. Maybe someone like cooking in a kitchen, you know, just like the behind the scenes content, quick reel with then just a hook as the text and then the phrase read the caption as the second piece of text and then kind of a lengthier caption where people might explain uh, or address the problem or solve the need, whatever that was originally created in the hook. That's definitely a trend that I see way more on Instagram, has way more success on Instagram than it does on TikTok. Also, of course, there are just so many memes that originated as photos and thus they were more popular and more widespread on Instagram rather than on TikTok, which is primarily a video-based platform. My third Instagram prediction for 2023 was that DM automation would become a catalyst for sales on Instagram. And I think that we kind of saw this to be true, although I don't have a ton of data and I definitely don't think it became as big of a deal as I thought it would or I hoped it would in 2023. 2023. I really feel that I'm still at a point, even at the beginning of 2024, where I am trying to convince people of the value of direct message automation, which by the way, if you haven't already, I did an episode, I think it was literally last week about DM automation, how to set it up, why you should use it. I talked about every single reason you might be hesitant, every single possible excuse as to why you should avoid DM automation. I cleared all of that up, explained to you how to set it up, and I shared with you the insane stats that I've experienced when using DM automation more likes, more views, way more comments, way more engagement, um, and of course, way more link clicks. So I hope, and I don't want to spoil any of my 2024 predictions, but I hope in 2024, more people start to use DM automation. I thought it would be a big deal in 2023, and it definitely has been. I definitely see way more people using it this year than I did in 2022. In 2022, I hardly knew anyone who was using ManyChat and DM automation. In 2023, I started to see some big brands use it. I saw Marvel use DM automation for promoting the newest season of their show, Loki. It was pretty cool to see a major company like that using DM automation. And I definitely saw way more people uh, who were the average Joes, so to speak, the, the people who weren't these big corporations using DM automation and having awesome success with it. I can also happily share that from polling people and having conversations and collecting the data anecdotally that we can collect, it does seem like the business owners and the content creators who used DM automation in 2023 did see much better results, much better sales, much more engagement on their posts than those who did not. So I do think DM automation is a catalyst for sales on Instagram. However, I don't think it is as prominent or as popular as I thought it would be in 2023. I hope that changes in 2024. I hope it blows up in 2024, but 
We'll see. The general population is always slow to adapt to change and to embrace new technologies. I do know that this technology has been around for a few years, and I will say that, you know, I'm not too sad if everyone isn't using DM automation, because if I'm still in the minority who is an early adopter to DM automation, and if you are still an early adopter to DM automation because you're using it as well, well, then we can kind of reap even more benefits and rewards because not everyone is using it, not everyone knows about it yet. So selfishly, I, I kind of hope not everyone starts using it in 2024. I thought a lot more people would use it in 2023. I think a lot more people are gonna use it next year in 2024, but we'll see. My fourth prediction for Instagram in 2024, and this one might be the most accurate or the most true of any of my predictions, was that Instagram would start to favor watch rate over any other typical form of engagement, and this is definitely true. One of the biggest indicators that this is true is that Instagram literally gave us the stats of watch rate and watch duration. So you can now see what percentage of your reel was completed by the average viewer, and you can literally see a graph showing you how long are people watching your content for, what percentage of people are watching at second four versus second 24. And not only has Instagram given us this stat, they have also directly told us that watch rate is a very valuable statistic. And when you study insights and you look at what posts are performing well, it used to be very, very easy to tell what posts would go viral and what posts would get the most views. If a post got 100,000 likes, you'd be like, yeah, that post is probably going viral and getting millions and millions of views. But that's not always the case now. A few years ago, if you were like, hey, this post got a couple thousand saves, that post was going to blow up and reach tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of people. That's not necessarily the case anymore. And I should say that, yes, that can still be true, but the most accurate and best predictor of virality, of reach, of high views on a video or a feed post on Instagram is watch rate or watch duration. Basically, how much time are people spending with that content? And going back to what I talked about earlier with those shorter, you know, six, seven second reels, one of the reasons that those are so popular on Instagram and less so on TikTok is that on Instagram, when you watch a six or seven second reel, but then you're reading a super long caption and that six or seven second long reel is just kind of like looping in the background, just playing over and over again while your viewers are reading the caption. That's a super high watch rate. That's like a 200, 300, 400% watch rate. And so the algorithm thinks that's a really powerful reel, a really engaging piece of content. And the algorithm will make sure that more people see it. I also think that Instagram is trending towards favoring watch rate or view duration over typical forms of engagement because typical forms of engagement are very easy to gamify, very easy to hack, if you will. So I can tell all of my followers, hey, if you're seeing this right now, make sure you press the like button. And very high percentage of them will press that like button, but that doesn't necessarily mean that they're spending more time on Instagram. And Instagram's ultimate end goal, every platform's ultimate end goal, whether you're on a podcast platform, watching this on YouTube, whether you're on TikTok, whatever, you probably know this by now. Every platform's end goal is to have you spend more time on the platform. And so I think these platforms are getting a lot smarter. And rather than using secondary metrics to figure out what's keeping people on the platform, for example, rather than saying, hey, a bunch of people are liking this reel, so these people must be spending more time on the platform because of this reel. That's kind of like a secondary metric, right? Instead, Instagram can just say, hey, a lot of people are spending more time on Instagram because they're watching this reel for a longer amount of time. And so it's much easier for these platforms to directly tell how long people are spending on the platform because of each individual type of content. And thus, it's easier for Instagram to reward and prioritize content, posts, reels, whatever they may be, that keep people on the platform for longer. So does this mean that your content has to be super, super short? No, but if it is going to be longer, it has to keep people engaged for that longer amount of time. If you have a 60 second reel and people are only watching the first 17 seconds and they're kind of getting bored, well then you need to change things up. And fortunately, like I said, Instagram gives us those statistics now. You're able to see when are people getting bored? When is there like a sudden drop off in views? And if you notice that, you know, let's say around the 17 second mark of your 60 second video, there's suddenly a lot less people watching or there's a big drop off in how many people are still watching the video. Well then you should rewatch that reel and figure out what happened around the 17 second mark. 
Was there a cut? Was there a word? Was there a pause? Was there a story that you were telling? Was there a tip that you were giving? Uh, what changed? Like basically, what do you think made people swipe away? And it should be pretty obvious. It might not always be totally obvious, but the more you can study this and the more you can really hone in on that view duration graph, the better your content will be. My fifth prediction for Instagram in 2023 was an increased value for community. And this was partially influenced, or this prediction, I guess I should say, was partially influenced by Instagram's trend report for 2023, in which they really highlighted the value of community. And I think that this increased value on community is true. And I have a few arguments as to why it's true and a few arguments as to why you should focus on it as we continue into 2024. First of all, I've already said it in this episode, but pretty much everyone is getting less views and less engagement right now than they were a year or two ago. But the people who are still growing and who still have been able to maintain their views and engagement are the people with the strongest, tightest knit group of community or, or the strongest community, I guess I should just say overall. I think what unfortunately happened was a lot of people grew rapidly in 2024, they went viral, they got tens of thousands of new followers, but that viral growth wasn't sustainable and they never took the time to build a strong relationship or community with their individual followers. And so because of that, the virality stopped happening, the crazy high views stopped happening, and so the engagement kind of went away. People kind of forgot about that person they saw that one time, they forgot about that one viral post they saw, and so the creator, AKA maybe you, was just kind of out of sight, out of mind. But then on the other hand, there are some creators who have a super high engagement rate, and that's usually because they have a super plugged in community. Of course, also Instagram gave us quite a few new community features this year. Some of those new features include broadcast channels, notes, and the expansion of the close friends list. These new features allow you to create an even tighter bond with your followers or with the people you follow. And I think you should definitely use these features or use any of the features really that Instagram comes out with that relate to community building. My sixth prediction for Instagram in 2023 was that AI tools would be used heavily for content creation. And this this sounds kind of crazy to think about, but at the end of 2022, there was hardly any AI. I mean, ChatGPT just came out at the end of 2022 and beginning of 2023. So if you think about where we were back then to where we are now, it's kind of crazy how many new tools there are. Personally, I use a handful of AI tools on a daily basis to assist me in my content creation, my script writing, my video editing, and all of that great stuff. I've seen so many awesome startups pop up and so many new companies, new technologies, new softwares, new tools come out pretty much on a weekly basis related to AI. I'm sure you've seen the onslaught of all of these new technologies as well. And what we can definitely say is that they have absolutely been used way more heavily for content creation in 2023 than they were in 2022. I mean, I hardly knew anyone who was using AI for content creation in 2022. And now in 2023, I know people who are using it heavily for their script writing, their hook creation. I know people who are using it for their carousel design and their image generation. In fact, just a few months ago on this podcast, I interviewed the creator of a company that was using 100% AI to come up with a product, design it, create the name, create the images, added it all to Shopify, I believe it was, and their goal was to make $50,000 in less than 90 days using AI. I mean, that that's like a crazy thing if you told that to someone in 2022, but now in 2023, that was a reality. So absolutely, there are way more people using AI for content creation in 2023 than there were in 2022. My seventh Instagram prediction for 2023 was that SEO would continue to replace hashtags. Hashtags. And what I can say is a few things. Number one, hashtags are definitely not dead, but they are also definitely far less important, impactful, beneficial than they were a few years ago. Hashtags are just not a central growth tool anymore. In 2016, hashtags were an awesome, powerful way to grow. In 2023, they can still help you, but not as much. If you haven't already, I highly recommend checking out the episode that we did a few weeks ago on how to grow on Instagram using hashtags, where I give you the end all be all. Here's exactly the strategy to use if you want to consider using hashtags to grow on Instagram. But what I can tell you about Instagram is that SEO and the searchability, the discoverability of our content and our profiles has definitely been 
been beefed up in 2023 compared to years past. I think there's two main areas within Instagram, two main changes that took place in 2023 that I wanna point to as proving this prediction to be true or accurate. The first thing is that now when you search terms on Instagram, you used to just get a single list and the list consisted of either hashtags or accounts. Now, when you search a term on Instagram, you get different tabs. You get a tab that says for you, a tab that says accounts, a tab that says audio, a tab that says tags, which is hashtags, a tab that says places, and a tab that says reels. So first and foremost, we see that where hashtags used to be 50% of the search results, they now represent only one sixth of the search results. And in the past, when you would search certain terms on Instagram, you would, like I said, just kind of get a list. Now, when you press the search button, you instantly get taken to a for you page of recommendations with words, phrases, and posts related to that topic. And those posts don't even have to use the hashtag that you searched for. So for example, if I search for the word snowboarding, it will pull up a custom for you page filled with content related to snowboarding, even if those posts didn't necessarily use that hashtag on their post. The algorithm is now smart enough to figure out based off the caption, based off the photo, based off the people who are engaging with it, what the content is about. And the second thing that I would point to in regards to SEO replacing hashtags is that Instagram has gotten rid of the recent category within hashtags. So in the past, when you searched a hashtag, when you looked up, pulled up a hashtag on Instagram, there were two tabs, two kind of like pages to look at. One was the popular posts that had used that hashtag. And the other page was just all of the recent posts in chronological order of everyone who's ever used that hashtag. Instagram got rid of this. Instagram CEO did say that a big part of the reason they got rid of this was because people were abusing this tool, dominating a hashtag and using it for inappropriate ways. And so it was just much easier for them as a company to get rid of this tab altogether rather than trying to keep tabs, pun intended, on all of the different hashtags and make sure that no one was abusing the recents category of any specific hashtag. But it also means that if you use hashtag snowboarding on your recent picture of you snowboarding, the only way that you will get discovered through that hashtag is if you become one of the top posts within that hashtag, not just because you're in the recent category and so anyone who's looking at that hashtag recently will see your post. My eighth prediction for Instagram in 2023 was that there would be more authentic content being shared. As you scroll through your Instagram feed and maybe you're even looking at your Instagram feed while you're listening to this episode, I think you'll see that there's a lot more authentic content. And what I mean by that is people sharing behind the scenes, people sharing about their lives, people sharing about their story, their journey, and maybe even their personal struggles. I know I'm definitely seeing a lot more like blooper or outtake content that people are sharing on Instagram, whether it's on reels or even more so on Instagram stories. I think there's just a lot more transparency on Instagram. And I think we're seeing a lot less of the hyper Photoshopped, hyper curated, hyper filtered posts that like look super fake and pre-planned and re really, really cheesy. Like I think those posts, while we definitely still see them and there's definitely people who still post that kind of content, I think largely that sort of content content isn't being posted as regularly anymore. And we're seeing a lot more content uh, of people talking directly to camera or people filming themselves with their phones and not slapping a million filters onto it. I think that's something that's a positive, something that we can all appreciate. I know it's something that according to my polls in the past and according to the data that we can find online, people are really embracing or they're looking for on social media is more of that authentic, transparent, genuine content and less of the hyper curated, hyper pre-planned, pre filtered content. But overall, if you're doing your own qualitative research, go ahead and scroll through your Instagram feed and let me know. Maybe I'm right, maybe I'm wrong, but what I'm seeing on my feed, maybe this is just what my algorithm is showing me, is definitely a lot more authentic content. So those were my eight predictions for 2023. Largely, I would say I was pretty on the spot. I was pretty accurate with what I thought would happen on Instagram in 2023. I don't say this to toot my own horn. I definitely had insider information. I definitely, you know, talked to Instagram and I had 
have their trend report or I had it at the time that I was recording that prediction for 2023. A lot of these things did come true. A lot of these things were influenced by the data that we were looking at ahead of time. But I will say that I definitely also missed the mark on some of these. I think there were definitely some features and some changes that came to Instagram in 2023 that I was not expecting at all, such as threads. I did not see threads coming. I did not see a text-based platform being created by Meta or being brought onto Instagram in the way it has. But speaking of being brought onto Instagram, one of my bold predictions for 2023 that I way missed the mark on was I predicted that there would be some sort of podcast content brought to Instagram. And I think specifically in that episode where I recorded and told you my 2023 predictions, I said that I wouldn't even bet my pinky toe on this prediction, but it was kind of my wild, bold prediction at the end of the episode. And that didn't come true. There are new audio components to Instagram. And I can tell you that Instagram is working on some more audio forms of content for 2024. There are things like audio only broadcast channels. They are working on things like adding audio messages into notes. And there are audio recordings that you can post on threads. However, there is no sort of podcast or audio component or audio content available on the main Instagram feed. We're really still with those three primary kinds of feed posts being photos, carousels, and reels. And stories largely haven't changed very much in terms of like the actual structure of the content in the last year. So I definitely missed the mark there. Stay tuned though, because within the next few weeks, I will be sharing my 2024 Instagram predictions. Thank you so much for watching today. Don't forget to like this video if you enjoyed it and make sure to go watch some of those recent episodes that I discussed about growing on Instagram, using hashtags and those sorts of things if you haven't already. I'll see you in the next one.